Well, hello again, and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And I'm very glad to have you back from vacation. I'm glad yes. you got to have some wonderful weather in Mexico. I'm a super I jealous. I did. I did. The pictures I, were awesome. You I'm, did look very relaxed. I can't lie. It was pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, I went down to speak at a conference. Yeah. That was pretty fun. That was... Uh, was the first time I've done like the main stage yeah. jumbo truck. Yeah, I thought that was cool. The pictures I you saw. Know, I was like, oh, how fun. With your, you were showing the pictures of your office with all the paintings and the, the art you've acquired. Well, was I was really trying fun. to, I was trying to, you know, cover a lot of ground yeah. about who I am. Yeah. Because uh, the, the theme of the conference was evolution and yeah. how we evolve. So I kind of did like a transformation mm -hmm. with my diet and my life choices yeah. and, you know, uh, sleeping enough, reading, like yeah. all that stuff, right? And, uh, but I also wanted to be like, hey, I'm a legit activist right. who's done all this stuff. Right. So that was the picture to kind of show that. And it was a good learning experience. You know, I had to do the whole- And it forced um, you to go to Mexico. Yeah, it's terrible, terrible. 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 So, I, I mean, I will say this for anyone who is considering a Mexican holiday, Acapulco has a bad rap for yeah. being like super dangerous and stuff. Where we were seemed clean, controlled, were not you in scary. A, were you in a- um, so we were at the beach that is like 10 minutes from the airport. Yeah. So it's a beach outside of the town. It's kind of a beach yeah. here. Then there's some mountains and then like an uh, Acapulco proper is like yeah. over the mountain. So I would say this is like the tourist yeah. strip and it's all these resources, uh, mm. uh, uh, resorts. Yes. And then maybe like some timeshare yeah. and stuff. So there's shuttles. Because what I've heard, well, the, my reaction was is that I've never been, but and this isn't just in Acapulco, this is in many places, that that strip, that area is fine. Right. Just don't go wandering too far away. You but, know, don't, but. But you know what, honestly, in most third world countries, I mean, South Africa, it's the same thing. Like yeah. if you're gonna go to a township, don't go. you're probably gonna get killed. Right. But if you hang out like <laughs> on, a, on a beach. Don't go to a township in South Africa, you're gonna get killed. No, well. I you, know what you you're know, saying, but, your probability also, is there. I mean, for these countries, I mean, they rely heavily on tourism Tourist, dollars. I agree. So they have a vested interest. We always talk about incentives, yep. right? Yep. So they actually have an incentive to keep it clean and safe yep. and all of that stuff. And you know, uh, uh, I had to pay for Louis, and that was my birthday present to him. But you know, they they, they flew me out, yeah, so, so that, that was nice. But the resort itself was, I mean, I was expecting you know ten dollar meals, and they were expensive. They were expensive, yeah. and that get that that's where like when I look at vacation, we usually go on vacation someplace. We usually go to Florida every you know winter sometime. Um, You're due for one, I, I think. am, but I think the coronavirus has us mm, skeptical. Yeah, it's not like I'm going to a house. And just hanging out at my own little house. Right. I don't know. I'm like, I, 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 it just to me, I'm like, is it worth, is it worth spending the thousands of dollars to go to some place? We'd probably go to some place we already been, um, or do I just take the two thousand dollars and like, you know, buy myself a hot tub instead? So, you know, like, I, because I hate to hot say, I'm, I don't think the coronavirus is keeping me home. I just, it is just that extra level of, eh, I don't I mean, know it was if we need to do this. I did hear on NPR on the way over on the news, you know, so 80,000 people yep. in China. Now, if you divide 80,000 into By, a couple of billion, no, it's, it's really, the risk seems fairly low. I think people right. have reacted in a way to try and contain well, it. Well, and I think the part that Dan follows us a lot. He's like, you know, we watch the coronavirus updates, right? <laughs> so that's fine. I, I don't mind learning things about, you know, viruses in other parts of the country. I think the concerning part for us is that um, some of the spread, like, okay, within the, the Wuhan province, it made, it makes sense. There was right. a virus, you know, just like you catch the flu or anything, right? Um, now there's this little bit of an outbreak in Italy, and they're not really sure how it got, like, they can't. They're saying that's one of the concerning things is they're not able oh, to they can't connect. Find, like uh, like oh, zero, Joe, this Joe guy was went on, the on plane. a plane and went to Italy mm -hmm. and then went to you know this show and then that's where. So they're starting to find um, disconnected pockets, which I mean, is a little you know, concerning. I, I have a lot of crazy friends and and weird people on my yeah. Facebook feeds and no. some strange fans. I love you all. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, I've seen some wacky oh, I mean, conspiracy it's, theories. I don't think it's, I don't, and, yeah, I don't, you I, know. I mean, I do think that, it, I don't believe probably that it started in this market that they said it did. It probably was um, a lab issue. I think they're a lab leak they were working on, you know, whatever. 
whether that nefarious or just virus, who knows what, and I think something happened. And then it got out, and being China, being China, they didn't talk about it, and then it spread a little bit. Right. And then once it started, I, I you know, I'm not, like, changing my life. I, I did, you know, there is a little bit of concern about um, availability of some products. That's legitimate because factories in China, some of them are still closed. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, like you might not be able to get your iPhone. Right. I mean, I, we're not going to die from any of this. But then you do start thinking about like how many things we do depend on China for. Well, it's interesting it, to kind of look at the the sort of global scope, right? Mm. Like the Dow dropped. Oh, I think, a thousand like, points or thousand something. Thousand points, right? right. Having uh, nothing to do with anything. Us. I right. mean, I, I, you know, I, um, the gold went up. Yep. It's at an all time seven seven year high. You know, bit. which which always okay. is nice when yep. you see people going back to gold. And nothing yep. wrong with you know having a little gold or silver or like real Stash. metals in your mm -hmm. uh, in, in your possession. Um, and then even Bitcoin, so yep. cryptocurrencies are kind of, you know, eking up a little bit. So so there's this sort of global yeah. thing that happens. Now, I think the WHO is yes. being very careful about not using the term pandemic. Oh, my God, we watched a thing last night and Dan and I are sitting there. And I mean, this poor wo this woman did a very good job of, you know, explaining. She was the one that was talking about the disconnect that they were. That was one of the things they were struggling with and how they're collecting data. And they're they're working on, you know, they're scientists and stuff. But she, every time the r reporter asked her about, so do you think this could lead to an actual pandemic? And she, like three different times in this interview, she asked, and boy, she was really good about saying all sorts of things and never saying the word pandemic. Well, you see, I think what's happening maybe in, in the media in general is people are starting, because we have so much access to so much information and so now and so quickly, and not necessarily I think the media in, in, in the past kind of had to have the hysterics. Yeah. And now they're like, ooh, ooh slow maybe down. maybe well, like we need to not be doing that right. because we are actually, actually like, you know, well, they're saying huge... their Chinese restaurants are suffering. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, when you think about it, and I'm like, so I'm not gonna I go. Mean, I'm not gonna go to China buffet or whatever because some people over in some country on the other side of the world that does. And I mean, and then I'm like, okay, so what's the logic? Like, is there a logical thing there? I mean, what it is uh, is that, people not really thinking things no through. More, and, no more. No more. I, I mean, mean, I think what social media also taught us is um, people are weird yes they which are. is which is why we should have smaller government <laughs> because we're trying to say all people are the same right and they are not no. and the way people react to things is different well and their appetite for risk so, is different and talking about that. way people react oh my god so did you watch any of the house reprimand session last week i did not watch any of i've the only speeches, watched half I, of it but because i, I can only take it people who who um who you know, took the rep reprimand, yeah. I guess. And I saw a lot of posts on yeah. Facebook, but yeah. Well, I started <laughs> watching. I've only watched, I've had this weird cold flu thing or whatever. So my attend, no, I'm not, I don't think I'm catching. <laughs> but um, I just don't, I, I only can take it in so, because it's that absurd that you're like, okay. I mean, it seemed like a giant waste of well, time, right? So, so it's for those of you who hours. have no, four hours of wasted time. So this is the little story. So every time we elect a legislature, that was weird, whatever that did on Facebook. Um, we, the House, the Senate does the same thing, but the House adopts its own rules. Um, one of the rules that everybody knows about is no audible electronic devices are allowed on the House floor. So you can have your cell phone and text or read things, but you can't have your phone ringing on the cell floor. You can't have flash ball, you know, flashes. Okay, there's things. Well, the Democrats are in control this time, and they added in a mandatory... Um, sexual harassment I I, training, I'm not sure right? exactly what the words were. Sexual harassment or just harassment training or sensitivity, whatever it was, for all... 400 House members. Well, this is multi-odd because one, I'm not sure you can compel an elected official to attend something that he's not obligated to do based on our laws in the New Hampshire Constitution. Well, well both that, but I also think uh, my understanding of what those House rules House rules are only supposed to apply to procedural Well, that's what I mean. So, in, so in I'm not sure that, one, this is something you can actually compel. Two, that it belongs in the House rules because it really has, I mean, in reality, whether you people like it or not, it has nothing to do with the day-in, day-out um, 
functioning of the House in the legislative body. Um, and then even worse is it was very poorly written. Shocking. Um, so there was no deadline as to when you had to complete this training or which training or all sorts of things, right? So a bunch of people took it. I've talked to people that probably, if I was up there, I probably wouldn't have taken it. Not because I don't think that's, you know, not because I don't think it's valuable. I just don't think it's appropriate. I think it's a weird thing, right? However, I'm sure that some people would have convinced me to take it just to just because. I mean, and I I'm actually like, know that some of the reps who got reprimanded took it. Right. Well, that's, they said uh, in, but they did not sign it in was, because they were like, "Why? You shouldn't be able well, to do and this." Well, and some of them, I mean, one of them um, teaches this in in the course of his regular job. Um, John Burt, who you know, colorful as he is, is not intimidating by any <laughs> means. So I saw the speeches from um, John Burt. Um, Kevin Craig, who teaches it, um, and the first gentleman, Charles Burns from Mil Milford. I listened to his whole story. I mean, he had a long speech, and he said, you know, this is just opening a Pandora's box. Next time, are we? he goes, I think we should have sensitivity training, and for me personally, the issue of abortion causes me great strife. And I thought, yeah, see what, you're, see what we've started? Now we're going to have um, this constant thing that really doesn't belong where it is. And so you had a bunch of reps who didn't take the course. Then the, the speaker's office spent your tax money um, to send them registered mail saying you didn't take this course. And here we're going to we're going to slap your wrist in front of the whole house. Um, and then they took them up for reprimand. Now, keep in mind, none of these people have any charges against them for no. in, in, inappropriate behavior or anything. This is all just part of, I don't know what the heck that's doing. I don't know. It's eh, whatever. Um, <laughs> so we, they went and they, you know, I mean, it was just showmanship. It really was. I, and I thought, well, maybe going into it, I try to put myself in somebody else's position, that maybe going into it, I would think, you know what, they, we, we voted to do this, you should have done it. And then I listened to these speeches and I thought there's no way I could still have voted to reprimand them, not in good conscience, unless I was literally following a party dictate. That's oh, really which, what I that mean, was. Kind of was. So what, was what caught me afterwards? We had um, so this all was all happening. There was a state rep from, and this is where I think is wrong with our world today. There was a state rep from Nashua who, after these hearings, I after this session, it was funny that they kept calling it proceedings. The Democrats kept referring to it as proceedings. And I kept thinking to myself, no, it's just house session. These are not proceedings. But I think that was part of the thing is that they're thinking this is just like the Kavanaugh hearings when they were trying to say he had done something wrong or when they tried to say President Trump had done, so, you know, like this is part of this mindset. So this rep from Nashua, she gets in the elevator. I read about this. Which first of all, if you're intimidated by people easily, don't get in an elevator ever, right? Because that it's scary in an elevator. I know, whoo, scary, Carla, I got in the elevator with you today and I thought, <laughs> oh, who knows what could happen, right? So she gets in the elevator and she's obviously, physically can tell that she's uncomfortable because somebody says, and she, she tweeted all this, somebody says, don't worry, we don't bite. To which another gentleman says, we might nibble a little. Okay, a how, joke, right? that's a joke. Like that's not sexual harassment. That's not harassment. That's not intimidation. You that's know, just a joke. Here's the other thing I want to talk about with with sexual harassment. And look, I've been sexually harassed. <laughs> I mean, I was promised a job yep. by you yep. know an associate general counsel of a very fancy company. Um, and my rule in life is call it out or let it go. Right. If something upsets you, say something about right. it to the people involved. Because Don't tweet uh, right. it. Right. Have the have the hard conversation say, in the moment. I, I find that inappropriate. And then voila, you're done, right? But instead, this rep took to Twitter, because that seems to be the modus operandi, you know, like go to Twitter, and posted that she had gotten into an elevator of old men, which I thought was funny coming from the person who th doesn't want us to put labels on things, but we're going to talk about how old they are. And she was, she said, I was uh, uncomfortable getting in the elevator. And I'm thinking. Well, she said, I was uncomfortable in my workplace and, and I have a right not to be and she, or something like all, that. And when you're like, elected, really? you're not in your workplace. That is not the, the, as an elected official, that is not your workplace. You are there representing your constituents. Don't be confused with what some union job is telling you is their workplace. So she got in the elevator. Somebody made a joke. 
a lighthearted joke because they were probably equally uncomfortable. And she went on and on. And then in the comments after this, all these women talking about the rape culture. And, and I thought, what have we come to when somebody just trying to make, I mean, literally, sometimes joke is just the breaking of the ice so that we can laugh and realize we're all, it's all okay. No, that well, can't be. Well, the thing is, I mean, I think that, that what I was going to say about the workplace stuff is I think all this overly sensitive Too much. stuff is... You can't blink at somebody without it meaning something. God forbid you had something in your eye and you closed one eye and it looked like a wink. They but it, could, but it's, they'd have to go home but for But it the day. actually has, you know, I think it's actually destroyed part of the yeah. fabric of, like, social life and... and Adulthood? Yeah. So think about this, right? So maybe in the 80s, I think, is when they started to formalize a lot of this. Yeah. Now, if you're a single person um, and you're, you know, a young professional, like, where do you meet people? You can't so, meet them so at work you, anymore so you because you them. couldn't be like, well, Carla, you look rather right. nice or today. Or I'd like to take you out for yeah. coffee or whatever right. it we is, meet right? Like we to go get a drink after work? So, so we've basically created this society where we've said you no one's allowed to, to have, like, conversation. Like a, you know, and anything. And you know what? People have lost the art of flirting. Right. Let me just, you know, because that is also part of a normal way for people to interact. Yeah. Like, we've actually gone and we've created this world where it's like, it's Cold not a world it's, that it's I want to live in no. anymore. Like, really, if you are offended because someone made a joke in a elevator where there were lights, there was literally zero actual <laughs> risk to you. And you, enough that you went out and to Twitter and And you're, like, uncomfortable it. with words, and then you want to change the entire society to not make you uncomfortable. I don't want to live in that world. It's it's nuts. It and really is. I, I, I hadn't really thought about the dating aspect, but you're right. We have, no wonder people have to go to um, dating sites and everything because I'm just thinking of scenarios and you're talking about the art of flirting. You know, uh, having served in the state house, you have many generations. You have, you know, from 20 year olds to 80 year olds, right? And I'll tell you. Like a the, 93 year old yeah, the there. Older, <laughs> the older gentlemen have their own, own. their own way. And you know what? There, it's harmless. It's not into. If it's intimidating, if I found any of their conversation intimidating, you know what I think? I think I should go talk to somebody because I'm overreacting. I mean, they all stay, I mean, they all like flirt with you, but the, it's harmless. But also, when they say it, like sometimes they will step over the line, and, and then, then you go, I'm, "Okay, and that's then I'm too like, much." Whoa, dude, that's a don't little talk much. to me like that. Right? And then they stop, and then they go, "Oh, and I then didn't they realize." They will make the same joke in to four somebody. months. <laughs> You know, but it's just, it's not such a big deal. You know, it's the same thing. Well, I was that, at the Courier yesterday, and I went to the Four Freedoms um, exhibit yeah, again, because yeah. I do want to do a little write-up about it. And I was looking at those Four Freedoms, and I agree with two of them, and I fundamentally disagree with two of them. Now, first of all, these are not things that are enshrined in the Constitution. Right, these are just random They're non-binding. Somebody's they opinion. They come from a, from a Roosevelt speech. Okay. Uh, from a Roosevelt speech. So it's like, these aren't actual enshrined freedoms. Right. This is just someone's opinion right so there's freedom of speech and freedom of religion then there was freedom from fear and no. freedom from something else and i was like how do i get freedom from something how do i give you freedom from fear you I can't, can't give that to you. If you're a Twitterer who is uncomfortable because someone was like, get in the elevator, we don't bite. And he, yeah. You know, th then I'm like, I can't make you not be scared of the world. And I'm also 100% unwilling to cede rights to you to, to live in La La right. Land where how do I, how, what world, what world would we create if we're like, I want to not have anyone be scared Ever. or fearful? Because or fear is not a not gift that I can give you. Right. It comes from the right. inside. So it's a self-empowerment Well, that's issue. like, it made me stop and think, because I was like, geez, does any of these people ever make me uncomfortable when I was up there? And I mean, I, I remember this one gentleman, he's since passed, um, Chip something or I can't remember his last name. He is this old older gentleman who served on labor with me, and we were having um, issues with um union members and he was a democrat you know he was completely on a different side of the of the political spectrum from me and he said to me one day timmy I, i'm going to walk with you to the garage oh 
how and sweet. I thought, oh, that's nice, Chip. And he goes, well, I don't think you should walk alone. And it's later. And it had go- we had gone into the evening. And I said, oh, okay, that's good. He goes, well, I want you to feel safe. And I looked at him. I go, oh, I thought you wanted me to make you feel safe. <laughs> you know, <laughs> joking. And every time that we were, went late, though, yeah. Chip always walked Aww. with me to the garage. And that was just his way of, he. that was what the culture he was brought up in is like, I, it's not appropriate for me to let this woman walk by herself down the dark road. And I'm a huge fan of chivalry. I love chivalry. Like, I'm sorry. Like, let's bring that back, please. Can we, people just start being nice to each other again? Look, look, the thing is, right, like, I mean, my husband and I argue about this a fair amount, right? Like the patriarchy yeah. and like where is overstepping the lines. And, and certainly like sometimes, like uh, I was here recording a show actually a few weeks ago and it was for older men. Yeah. And I... I sort of, someone said something and I kind of got a little irked. Yeah. And then, you know, I, 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 my retort was, well, that's not creepy. Right. And then they all, I could tell, like, got really, really defensive, you know? And it was like a ha moment for me where I was like, oh, okay, these are actually people who are feeling. They're feeling a little stifled. maligned and attacked, and everything they say and do is bad. Bad, and 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 I was like, you know, that can't be fun either. But you know, man, the patriarchy yep. is. I mean, it's it's a little real. It is. it is, you know, and there is real sexual harassment, and I'm really glad that uh, Weinstein's going to yep, go to yep. jail, and you know, like you shouldn't be trading and favors realize, for sex And I realize that and, many, 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 many women have, in one point in their life, been in some awkward or even really bad situation involving a male, but that doesn't. But it's not all males. No. And this is where it gets back to the kernel of individualism. You can't look at problems and collectivize them to such a level where all old all white men, men are in predators. elevators are predators. predators. Yeah. And That's also not right. No. Like, we've got to find and restore the balance. And part of that is just, like, everyone stop being mean dumb about and dumb. <laughs> like, stop. stop making presumptions. Stop feeling. And a lot of it's very passive aggressive. I mean,. It, you know that whole Look, and part of that is pandering, right? So that state rep was pandering to her, her little her circle. fan base, right? right? And and so I kind of get it, but if you're if you're actually being, uh, I'll use the term manipulated. If you're just being swept up in these things where you're like, oh, I was never mad really about this till a year ago, but now I'm mad about you know everything, everything, the patriarchy, sexual harassment, me, you know, Bernie, right. social, you stop you know? you know? at some point, don't just step back and go, wait a minute. How did I become so so riled up over all this stuff? Yeah, because because I mean, we are in sort of an end game in terms of I think that v- I hope. Uh, you know, fingers crossed, of that fear-mongering, right? Um, and that anger. Like, we have to transcend that, guys. Like, we can't just keep being yep. like, Rah! Right, and the more... Any because, group- you know what? The more that happens, there is another group of people, people who are, are gonna- just growing government, getting yep. richer, Meanwhile, exploiting right. everyone. Like, there is that faction as well. And so it's like, let's let's be better. Let's be kinder and just be better ni- to each right. other. Right, and I, uh, you know, it never hurts to be nice. It just never does. No. Nope. Never. Uh, ever no see nice and kind um so that took us through almost the entire see, show <laughs> when you said we have nothing i do want to talk real quickly the fire trucks what's up with the fire trucks okay so i, okay, I, can I, I before yes. we even go into yep. that can i just say two things that i find very weird so apparently if a a firefighter <laughs> you're gonna say what i no, yes if a firefighter dies within 24 hours of a call out but they die in their sleep at home that is treated as you died in the line of duty, what? and you get all the, the extra bennies that would come with actually having like a, you know, a, 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 fly, a who died a, serving died, being a first responder. Right. So I found that very curious, I and I found not, that I very would like to know more about that because that's peculiar. And then this this, this happened is, the day after that funeral. Well, no, I, it was the same day. It was the same it day. The same and day. then the report started so saying is, it was two different see, days. See, this is going to have to be a different, there's going to have to be a whole show. So for those of you who don't know, and I'd love for people to send us some information, you can email us at manchtalk at gmail.com because somebody knows more about what happened. There were two fire trucks that collided with each other and a black pickup truck. Um, I believe it was Friday, last Friday. 
um, on the corner of Maple and Bridge on their way to a fire on Arlington Street. I'd love to hear more about somebody who actually saw what happened. I, 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 I'm kind of surmising what may probably happened, but it did make me go into the whole thing about what are we what what are we doing with firefighters so when it, they die? And I and here's it's the a big million thing. dollar damage. E, They're oh gonna no, have we're to write like two million. They have to write off both the fire trucks, and we pay for that. We, there is no insurance that we are self insured. So guess where that comes from? Us. So so I have a few questions. One is if this was uh, not fire trucks if this was like not state property would people be arrested and indicted and somehow go to jail for causing, an, for causing accident, an accident right because we know accidents happen right but generally when accidents happen someone still gets punished yep. right in 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 for us normies right for the muggles Normal. not not for them right <laughs> And then you know you you already said the money's going to come yep. out of our pocket. So I think we I think this is what we'll have to talk about next week. Okay, because yeah. I think we're almost out of time. Um, I do want to remind people school vacation week this week, which is wonderful because it's like going to be fifty five degrees today. It's beautiful. Yay! And March starts on Sunday. Yes. How exciting is that? Um, <laughs> we made it through the winter, it! folks. Um, don't say that. Now we'll get six feet of snow next week or something. It's true. Um, I just cursed all of us. <laughs> This Thursday night, February 27th from 5 to 8, is free night at the Courier for Families. Um, I'm a big proponent of the Courier and the wonderful things they have. Um, you can get more information about that at courier.org. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of kids wandering around because it's warm out, so just be careful because, you know. Yeah, actually, because I do a co-working thing there on Mondays yeah. from noon to oh, 3. Sure Anyone who wants to come hang out, that's the time to do noon it. To 3 on Mondays. There were so many kids yesterday. It was also awesome. I didn't awesome, realize though. it was school holiday yeah. till, till I saw all the kids, and I was like, wow, they had, yeah. like, storybooks. Yep. It was wonderful. It's cool. Yeah. So next week we'll talk about firefighters. Anybody who has any insight on um, firefighter benefits or anything to do with this crash from last Friday, please, by all means, email us, manchtalk at gmail.com. Otherwise, enjoy this wonderful weather today, and Carla and I will be back next week. Bye. Take care.